using Excel to compare phone plans. Before you leave 8th grade, you need to demonstrate that you know certain basics of spreadsheeting. And we are using Microsoft Excel in particular, but the um, rules apply to many other types of spreadsheets, whether you're using Google Docs or a spreadsheet uh, on an Apple platform or what have you. Uh, basically, you need to demonstrate that you can create a spreadsheet and understand it. You can format row and column headings in a spreadsheet and use different effects. You, know, you have to know how to merge cells to include a title or a section heading, how to enter your data in the spreadsheet, uh, entering and use formulas to manipulate that data, and to create a relevant logical graph from the data. Uh, this particular um, set of directions you will have uh, physically by you, but it took five pages to type up what I wanted you to do. And yet we can do it a lot more quickly uh, with a video tutorial. Although unlimited long distance is typical now, not that long ago te telephone companies charged a price per minute for long distance calls. Some companies uh, offered plans with a very low price per minute but required a high monthly enrollment fee. And other companies uh, had small or no monthly enrollment fees, but their price per minute charges were more. And it was up to the consumer to determine which phone plan or company would be most cost effective for them. them. Of course, cellular companies still do have uh, different calling plans where you get a certain amount of minutes. Uh, and then when you go over those minutes, the charges per minute are quite high, up to 45, 50 cents a minute. So it's not that far off. What you're going to do is you're going to put into an Excel document the um, base price that is charged plus how much the company charges per minute. And then after you have entered the data into the Excel document, you will create a chart. And then you will examine the chart and figure out if you only uh, maybe spent 30 minutes long distance a month, which plan would be best for you as opposed to uh, someone who talked 300 uh, minutes a month long distance. We are putting it in increments of 30 minutes. Of course, you'd pay minute by minute. But if we had it minute by minute, the uh, graph would be very unwieldy. This is an overview of what your finished project will look like. When I go to File, and I pull down to Print, you'll see here uh, that I have put in my header. There is a border around all of my um, data entry cells. And the graph has been completed with a title and with labels for the x and the y axis. Let's get started. Open an Excel document, go to uh, the Start menu and Microsoft Office Find Excel, open up a document. When it opens, the very first thing you do is you're going to save it. Make sure you are putting it in your own network folder and give it the name, your own last name, phone plan. Once you've saved it, look down at the bottom of the spreadsheet and you will see different tabs. Double click on the word Sheet 1 in the tab at the bottom. It will highlight. And then you're going to name it Phone Plan Comparison. We are going to talk about inserting and merging a title. The title that we're going to type in, and I'll go take you over to the spreadsheet. I'm going to click into cell A1. Make sure we stay in A1. Finding a phone plan to meet this is all typed into cell A1 if you click into B you'll see there's nothing in B1 C1 D1 etc you're going to click back into cell A1 and what we're going to do is we're going to make this merged we're going to click and hold and drag right over through either E or possibly, I think, F1 will give us more space. You're going to come up here and click on Merge and Center. And then you're going to click on Bold. And you're going to click on Italics. 
and in the next demo I will show you, in the next step I will show you why it was important to do this. Next, we are going to enter and format our column headings. I'm going to go into the Excel spreadsheet. For ease, in A2 I have already typed minute usage. In cell B2, call for cheap. C2, 7th heaven. D2, dial discount. And E2, minute master. Now, obviously they've gotten chopped off. So what I can do is I can click into cell A2, put my cursor between the A and the B, and when I double click, it expands to hold what is in. So as you're typing them, you could actually type it, double click between the two letters, then go into the next cell, B2, double click, etc. Remember, you are not merging and centering any of your um, column headings. You, you only merge and center your title. And so you see it expands. Now I want to show you why we merged and centered the title. I'm going to click back into my title. To, if you merge and center and you've made a mistake, you haven't pulled it across enough cells, you can always unmerge and center and redo it later. But for right now, I have unmerged this and I am going to now double click between the A and the B and you'll see when it expanded, it Ha it expanded to hold the whole title, which gave us a very unwieldy uh, column. So I'm going to do an undo, and then I am going to do undo again, which puts the merge and center back on. And of course, when we, when we click between the A and the B, it only expanded to hold minute usage. Now, I need to make these uh, column headings bold and centered. So I can simply use the white cross, click into cell A2, and just select over to E2. And then when I go up to the uh, font bar, I can just click on bold, and it does it for all of them. And I can center them, and it does it for all of them. Now I might have to go in and readjust to make because when I added the bold, it made them a little bit bigger, so I have to readjust the settings. Now that's it for adding the um, column headings and formatting them. Next, we're going to demonstrate how easy it is because of uh, Excel's ability to recognize patterns to enter data into a spreadsheet. Uh, what we're going to do is we want to add the minute increments from uh, 0 down to 300. So we'll go back into the Excel spreadsheet. In A3, I'm going to type a 0, and in A4, I'm going to type 30. Now, this obviously is going to tell Excel that I want to type by 30s. So instead of having to go 60, 90, 100, etc., all I have to do is put my cursor in the middle of cell A3 and just select down through A4. So both of the cells are highlighted. Then what I'm going to do is put my cursor over to the right bottom of cell A4, and you'll see it turns to a little black plus sign. When I click and hold and drag, you can see the shadows. And so in other words, it's counting by 30s, and we're going to bring it right down to cell A13, which is 300, which is the extent of our numbers of minutes. That's very, very easy. And we're going to be using a similar technique uh, when we fill down our formulas. If need be, pause the video now, go back, Make sure you have your title typed in. Make sure it's merged, scented, bold, italics. And make sure you have each of the foam companies typed in as headings in cell A2, cell B2, C2, D2, and E2. And then we'll continue. Now we're going to talk about putting in formulas using cell references. Each of these formulas is going to create a straight line in the graph, and that connects to the linear equation uh, concepts that you've been studying in your math class. We'll do the first one together, but then you guys will have to go back to the first page of the directions, and you will have to find the specifics in terms of the monthly charge plus the minute charge for each of the other three phone companies. We'll do call for cheap together. You will follow the same pattern to do the um, 
the formulas for the other three. First, however, since we want our answers to come in as currency, we need to format the cells so that when we put the formulas in, the answers will show up with dollar signs, and we do not have to type those dollar signs ourselves. We are now back in the spreadsheet, and all of the cells from cell B3 down to uh, E13 we want as currency. So I'm just going to click and hold and select all of, drag to select all of the cells from uh, B3 to E13. I'm going to go up to the number uh, column so, uh, menu bar selection. I already have it on currency because I had formatted the cells as currency. Yours might come in as number. You'd go to the drop down and choose currency. Do not choose accounting. Choose currency because the, the formulas don't work properly with the accounting. All right, now what's going to happen is when I go and put my formula in uh, and the answer appears, it will appear with dollar signs. So let's go back to the direction. It says, um, call for cheap, quoted a $9.95 monthly charge, uh, base charge, and then for every minute the person spoke, it would be five cents. To figure out the cost for each of the minute increments, you need to put a formula into cell B3. Now you're going to remember to use an equal sign to tell the computer that you're entering the formula. And then what would it look like? Well, it would be the monthly cost, in this case $9.95, added to or plus the number of minutes used times the cost per minute. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, actually use a plus sign and then parentheses with the multiplication inside the parentheses to clearly show order of operations. However, Excel would do this because it knows order of operations. We're doing this just to review your math principles. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and get started. I am back in the spreadsheet. I'm going to click into cell B3, and the first thing I'm going to remember to do is type my equal sign. That lets the computer know I'm going to do a formula. Now, I said that I wanted to put in my base price, so it was 9.95, and then I'm going to have to add that to, whoops, add that to, and I'm going to use open parentheses. Now, I want the number of minutes, so I'm going to actually click into the cell, which would be A3. You can either type A3 or click into it, and the computer will type it for you. And then we need times, which is the asterisk. Shift 8 will give it to you. And then the uh, cents per minute, which was 0.05. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. Now, I can do a couple of things here. I could hit Enter, or I could actually hit on the little check, which you notice also says Enter. And then this puts the 9.95 in here. Obviously, if I had a base price of 9.95 and I didn't use the phone at all that month, I would have no minute charge. So it would be just 9.95. So that looks right. Notice that my formula shows up here in the formula bar. Now, instead of having to type that formula in for cell uh, with uh, 30 minutes or, or cell A4, I can simply put my cursor at the bottom right-hand corner of the cell. The formula is there. I can click and hold, and I can drag it down. And then what it does is it calculates for me how much I would have to pay whether I had talked for 120 minutes or 300 minutes. Now, there's another way to do this. If I go undo, the other way I can fill down is I can either click and drag, or if I just double click on that little black box, it also fills it down for me. Pretty neat, huh? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to do what I just did, put the formula in, fill it down, and then I want you to go stop the video and use your sheet, go back and put the formulas in and fill them down for 7th Heaven, Dial Discount, and Minute Master. 
Now it's time to check your work. If you notice over here, I have clicked into cell B3, and my formula shows up here as 995 plus A3 times 5 cents a minute. Now, if I click anywhere else, you'll notice the formula is still there, and Excel was smart enough to apply it to the different row, which is why we use the uh, cell reference instead of the specific number of minutes, because then when we pulled the formula down, it would apply to uh, all of the different rows as opposed to just that one specific number. So these are what your numbers should look like. When you click into cell uh, C3, you'll see your $7 plus 7 cents a minute, and you started out with A3. Same thing with um, the next for dial discount. It was $6 plus 9 cents a minute. And in Minute Master, you could have put 0 plus and then had the uh, 12 cents times A3 in parentheses, but you really didn't need to because there was uh, no uh, base fee. So I just put in the 12 cents times the A3. And as you can see, it applies it to the different rows all the way down. After you've checked your work, we're going to go on to graphing. If there is some discrepancy between these numbers and your numbers, then make sure you check your formulas. All you have to do is fix the formula in one of the cells, and then you can pull it down, and it will just uh, copy right over and fix it for the others. Now that we have all of our formulas in, we're going to format the uh, data in the um, spreadsheet to make it a bit more readable. And then we're going to create a logical chart. If I go to File, and I go to Print right now, you'll see that the numbers are here, but they, there, is no, there are no more uh, lines showing. So it makes it a little bit hard to read. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab. And I'm actually going to put on uh, some borders uh, that will show in any type of a printed page. Notice also the line here, the dotted line, shows the, the right-hand extent of my page. And when I make my graph, I don't want to pull it over that dotted line. Otherwise, it would be on more than one page. To put borders around the data is very easy. I'm go not going to put them around the actual title but I am going to uh, click into cell A2 and click and hold and drag and select from A2 down to E13. And then <clears throat> above on the home page, above font, there is a little thing that looks like a window pane. When I click on the drop down arrow and I go to all borders, now when I go back into my print layout, you'll see that it's much easier to read the information that I have put into the spreadsheet. All right, now that I've got the borders on, I am going to create a graph. So to create the graph, I'm going to have to select, again, the same selection, A2 through E13. Now I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And I want to look for the scatter plot graph chart. So when I click on the drop down arrow, the one I want is actually the third one down that says scatter with straight lines. So I'm going to click onto that, and my graph is going to pop right into my spreadsheet. I can click in the bottom of the, in the top border of the graph or in any border, you'll see the four uh, arrows. That means uh, it's a universal sign for move. So what I'm going to do is move my graph right over here underneath my data. And that means that it is all on one sheet. In fact, I could even go to the diagonal and pull it out just a bit. But <clears throat> my data is not very readable right now. So what I want to do is I want to fix it a bit. Notice that we had um, counted by. 30s, and the actual x-axis is counting by increments of 50. So to change this, we're going to do, we're going to actually use a, ta um, a tab called Layout. We're going to go to the Layout tab, not Page Layout, but Layout. 
before we fix those increments, we might as well put in our chart title and our axes titles. To do this, we're just going to go to chart title, go to the drop down, and I want uh, a title above the chart. I can then click right into the title, and I can say um, which phone plan is the best for me, question mark, or something to that degree. Now, once I've got the chart title, I can go to axis titles. I can go to the primary horizontal axis title and say below the axis. So this obviously, if I double click in here and highlight the text, this is the uh, number of minutes used. Click off to set that, and then I can go to the axis titles again and get the primary vertical. And uh, some students told me that rotated title is the easiest one to work with. Double click to highlight, and this one would be the um, cost would be good enough. All right, now I need to get this x-axis to count in increments of 30. To do this, you actually have to go over to axes. Make sure your graph is selected and go to the primary horizontal axis and go down to more primary horizontal axis options. Now, right now, the minimum is zero, which is what we want. Uh, maximum uh, 350 is fine. The major unit is the problem. You notice that it's counting by increments of 50. I have to click into the Fix button in order to be able to change it. I'm going to change it to 30. And the minor unit, I'm just going to leave that at, at whatever the default is, and then say close. Now you'll see I am counting in 30-minute increments. Now, as far as the cost goes, if I needed to fix that, I wanted to um, count it by tens as opposed to by fives, I could go to axes. I could go to the primary vertical axis. And again, more primary vertical options. And there again, we would see the minimum, which is at zero, which is what I want. Maximum at 40, which is a little bit more than what the 300 minutes would cost in any plan. And there, the major unit is five. I think I prefer to leave it that way, so I'm just going to close it. So now the graph is formatted. And everything appears to be readable. The last thing we're going to do now is we're going to go into the uh, print menu. So first of all, we're going to uh, save. And then you need to click out of the graph, because if you went to file and you went to print right now with the graph selected, the only thing that you would have would be the, the graph itself. And we don't want that. We want the data with the graph underneath it. So we're going to go back to home. We're going to deselect the graph by clicking into any other cell. We're going to go back to File. We're going to go back to Print. Now, you're not actually going to be printing these, probably. But were you going to print? This is what I wanted to show you. You look over here, and you see that everything is readable in the Print Preview. And what we need to do, but there's no way to know whose is whose. And since this particular exercise, everybody's is the same, we want to put in some determining information. So you go all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see something that says Page Setup. On Page Setup, you're going to go to the tab that says Header and Footer. Then you're going to go to the Custom Header tab. And here you would type in the left section your name. In the center section, you would type your teacher's name. And your period. So let's say it's Ms. And then in the right section, you would type the date. And then you would say OK once and OK twice. And were you going to print it, you would check 
and find out what teacher what printer the teacher told you to print to and you would look very importantly down here at the bottom and make sure that you were printing page one of one or however many pages you knew you needed you would not print it if it said one of 300 you'd know you had a stray mark in there somewhere and you would not print that or you would simply go print just page one or something like that so always look down here uh, before you print because you do not want to waste ink and paper and uh, your header would print out on every single one so we're going to go back into the um, spreadsheet now and what you will then do is you will look at the um, linear equations and then you will have different scenarios and you will decide well if I spoke for 60 minutes in the month which plan if I only use about an hour worth of minutes in a month which plan would be better for me however if I um, spoke about 300 minutes in a month which plan would be the most cost effective I hope this tutorial has reviewed uh, many of the basics of Excel for you and that you will remember how to use these different uh, skills when you get to the high school.